Do you love great podcasts? Do you love great Australian podcasts? Of course you do. Australians make incredible podcasts. And if you want to stay up to date with the best Australian shows, then check out Oz Podcasts. Look for us on social media and find your new favorite show from the Australian podcast directory on ozpodcast.com.au. That's O-Z-P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S, ozpodcast.com.au. Check it out. If you like new stuff before anybody else, if you like to keep your finger on the pulse, if you like the future and want to be in it, keep on listening because we'll start in a minute. Uh, tech webcast. The hosts and guests are unsurpassed. Uh, tech webcast. Because technology it moves so fast. Tech webcast. Ha, stick around and you're gonna have a blast. Yeah. Tech, 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 tech webcast. Ha, ha. Tech, 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 tech webcast. Let's go. Welcome to episode 319 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 17th of January 2015. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday at midday Melbourne time. Please rate us on iTunes and like us at Facebook forward slash Tech Webcast. Follow us at Twitter uh, at Tech Webcast. Your hosts today are Brad, Jody, Steve, Jacob, Belinda and myself, Andrew. And sitting in with us today is show favourite Hannah Silver, who's here to talk about her new album. And our very special guest today is Zadi Diaz from Zadi.tv over in Los Angeles, California. How are you, Brad? Andrew, how are you, mate? Welcome back. I'm to very well, thank you. Podcast. Yeah, it's uh, January 2015. Can you believe the date? And uh, a new year is upon us and forward and with all of the things that a new year brings. Exactly. In, in, you're in, yep, spot on, mate. Spot on. Spot on. Well, how's your week been, man? And what did you get up to over Christmas? Yeah, it took, and, took a bit of time to get? have a rest. Any cool gadgets you get? Um, yeah, I, look, I took a bit of time to relax over Christmas and, and recharge the batteries. With, you know, baby Miles, it was uh, our first Christmas with our, our son, so that was a whole lot of fun. We had family come in from interstate, which was a real blast. So, um, And I managed to get myself a, uh, what is it, a, an Xbox One from my wife as a, a Christmas gift, which is, you know, pretty cool for a geek. So I've been having a good play around with that, Brad, and um, yeah, it's, it's been a great little Christmas. Good one, mate. Good one. I hope you, how are you liking the Xbox so far? <laughs> yeah, it's really great. It's, um, I find I'm, I'm downloading a lot of game trials. It's it's so easy to just sort of download. Mm. Um, it's it's three gigs or something, five gigs for some of the games. But you come back half an hour later and you've got a game sitting there and you can have a play with it. So it's it's a really interconnected kind of device and I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, good one, mate. Good one. I also got one too. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So. And, uh, yeah, and uh, you're working on a review too at the moment too for one of the games. I am, I am. There's a, a car game in there that um, Horizon 2, I think we can mention, that yep. uh, there's a review mm -hmm. that is scripted up and um, just about ready to release. So I've been enjoying uh, that game, Forza Horizon 2. And um, yeah, the review should come out uh, in the next couple of days this week. So keep an eye on Tech Webcast and um, you can read all about it. Sweet, good stuff. Who do we go to next? Let's go to Jody. Jody, welcome. Hey, hi Brad, how are you? How has your uh, week been and your Christmas and your holiday and what did you get for Christmas? Anything exciting or? Oh, well, no, but before Christmas, as you re remember, um, we did that amazing, incredible journey. Um, oh, that's right. And went out, <laughs> went, oh, right. went to the um, dog show yeah. in Orlando with, with Jewel and um, in, our, in our RV that we nicknamed Bertha. Um, we kind of <laughs> joked that she's kind of big and um, not particularly fast. And she drinks a lot, but she's a heck of a lot of fun. So, but we had a good time and we're, we're doing the countdown now for Westminster. Cool. Wow. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah, Jules, Jules uh, entered in Westminster. So, and it'll be live streamed. So if you're really, really bored on the 16th of <clears throat> February, you can watch. I'm jealous. I want to be a dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not touching that one. All right. Let's go. <laughs> um, any else you want, want to say, Jody? Any else you want? No, I'm just... I'm just really glad to be back, and um, I'm very excited about our guest today, and um, and to see Hannah back on too. And yeah, um, yeah. good to have it's all good. On. 
She's she rocked. Yep. Uh, let's go to Blinda. Welcome back, Blinda. How you been? And how's your Christmas been? Been week? really good. Yeah, I've just been off for the last four weeks. I go back to work on Thursday, so that'll be interesting. Okay, and um, yeah, it's been really relaxing though. Um, I bought an Xbox One yes, as well. I was, so, I was gonna say you actually bought yeah, an Xbox One too. So it's the best thing that I've. What made you buy one? What made you get? Um, looked like fun because you told me about it and everything, and I saw people oh, playing it on Twitch and that sort of thing, and it was yeah. Mm. Looked looked fun so I thought why not buy one and it's good how the social element as well because you can involve other players as well you don't yeah. have to just play by yourself that's yeah, pretty cool yeah all right let's go to Hannah Hannah do you have an Xbox at all or do you like that sort of stuff uh hello no Welcome. I never really got into I was I was the person that when we were kids I'd come over to your house and you'd be like, hey, let's play Nintendo or Sega. And I'd be like, yeah, okay. And then I'd lose. <laughs> so I never really got the hang of um, video games very much. And so I'm just like, eh, okay, that's nice. But I can't really get past level two. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, I don't have an Xbox One. And you have a good Christmas and holiday, no? Yeah, yeah. I'm still on holiday. I'm very lucky. Um, that I get such long holidays, I'm off till the end of the month. So, yeah, so that's been great. I've been, um, like you said, I've been working on second album with my band, The Prince of Seagulls. Cool. And so, yeah, and enjoying summer. It's a good summer. I'm enjoying it. It's been hot, though. Not that hot. Anyway, I like it when it's hot better, when, better than when it's cold. I find the cold very crippling. I like the cold. But, but I like it hot, but not hot, 40 degrees hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Jennifer's here. Welcome, Jennifer. I am here. Hi there. How's it going? I'm good. And you? I, I'm, you know what? I'm so happy to be back. I've totally missed the show and I've missed the listeners. I've missed everything. So I'm awesome. Thank you. And uh, how's your week been, Jennifer, and your Christmas? And did you get anything cool for Christmas at all? You want to mention anything? I did get some cool toys. Yeah, I got a few, a few cool toys. I got the new Nexus player for of the TV, you know, so oh. it's kind of like an Apple TV, but it's Nexus and uh, the Android rather. And I, like uh, I love it. I use it all the time now. I, uh, that's so you my, use the Apple my... TV less now than, than the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> it's, I, I think, you know, because it's new and it's, you know, and so that's kind of what happens, right? But I still love my Apple TV too, of course, you know, and for, especially for the AirPlay. You know, that's my favorite part of Apple TV. Uh, yeah, and then what else did I get? I got... Um, an external hard drive. Uh, I'm trying to think what other techie stuff I had. There were some other. Oh, I got the Star Trek door chime. So every time I go through my threshold, it goes swish. Oh my God, that's like, amazing. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. That is so I love cool. it. <laughs> that is very cool. Yeah. How about you? Cool stuff for you? Yeah, I got an Xbox One. That's right. You got, Linda the Xbox got an Xbox One. one. Andrew got an Xbox One. Who else got an Xbox One? Oh, Sounds like everybody does. So you got an Xbox One? No, I don't. No. <laughs> well, you better get off the podcast. It's, I know. It's Xbox One. Only, I gotta go buy one now. <laughs> 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 so suddenly a run on Xbox One. Yeah. Um, Jacob, welcome. Or not? <laughs> <laughs> the mute's Missing in the action. Right corner, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> he's I'm moving his Jacob mouth because uh, he said he's not going to be on the show, but he's actually here, so. Um, He's Maybe he's just listening. Yeah, I think he is because he didn't like the, the Ustream um, video because he got too many ads and stuff. <clears throat> okay, moving okay. right along. All right, let's go to Steve. <laughs> what about you, Steve? How's your week been, mate? Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Um, yeah, it's, it's been really busy. Um, last week, I, uh, I missed. Last week, I... Oop, picking up something. How was that? Picking How was that? Yeah, we're picking up. Uh... Yeah, we're picking up. Uh... Hang on, that's Jacob. Hang on, that's Jacob. Um, no, I, I I had my mic off. Please mute yourself, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's Jacob. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, guys. So, Steve, how has your week been? Oh, uh, I just thought it was funny. Uh, this last couple of weeks have been pretty busy. Uh, busy, busy filming a new story for Rialto Theater. That's why I missed last week's show, Tech Webcast. I still have to finish it up on Sunday. Uh, me and my wife were vendors well really for her for the wedding fair so uh i got to film uh everything going on for the uh, wedding fair as well and surprisingly there was a lot of you know people that i've met before from the various 
uh, functions, and uh, so it's been really amazing the last couple of weeks. Good stuff, Steve. And how's your Christmas been, mate? How's your Christmas? Oh, it was good. I had, like, family come over. Um, uh, we got a bunch of stuff, uh, so, some stuff from Peru. My uh, stepdaughter went to Peru, so uh, she got me this. Uh, it's funny. She gave me this hat, and you look underneath it from Peru, and it says Made in China. I thought that was funny, but... <laughs> Oh, wow. Cool. But yeah, it was cool. I got little uh, coasters and stuff. Oh, and a mug. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I don't have it in here. Co- uh, she's on a ship, so she got me like the ship's coffee mug. So Cool. Wow. Very How old cool. is your stepdaughter? Um, I think she's like 28-ish, I think. 28, I think. Okay, so you so you became a you became a dad. Not only are you an, now a husband, now you're a dad, too. Well, I was before, but I oh, actually I, I've oh, known I her know since that. she was five. Yeah. I did not know that. Wow. Mind blown. There's so Ooh. many things that we don't know. <laughs> yeah. The life of Steve. Fantastic. Do you ever really know somebody? Yeah. Do That's you really? right. <laughs> this is getting so esoteric. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, Andrew, what else have you been up to, mate, over your week? Yeah, just um, just trying to get settled, too. We moved house, uh, I think, mid, sort of mid-December, so... Um, Trying to get settled, we moved from a townhouse into an actual house, which is great. So we've got a backyard and you know a little bit more space, and it's on a single level because um, Christy's just been a bit worried about Miles. He's starting to crawl now, and with stairs um, and a crawling baby, it's it, it was just preferable to, to get to to flat ground. So um, yeah, really enjoying the new place now, and um, just been trying to get on top of 2015 and looking at all of the different things to do and opportunities and, and things like that. So, um, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, any questions, Steve or Jody for Andrew before he goes, because he needs to go to 12, goes to 12 1230 and leave at 1230. Oh, so that's why I'm first. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, gee, what, what have you been, uh, uh, doing since, uh, did you guys have a show last week? Cause it sounded like you haven't been back since. No, we didn't. Yeah. We, um, no, we didn't have a show. We, we were going to, but then we had, uh, I think a few issues and it was probably just a little bit early in the year. Yeah. So oh, um, okay. yeah, we decided to, to postpone and keep the listeners, um, Guessing. We have been getting a lot of listeners but we're away too, Andrew too, by the way too, mate. We're getting a little download and stuff. So yeah, yeah, I noticed that, Brad, which is um, uh, really fantastic. And, and obviously, yep. I guess the news of the week is um, is CES are so following a whole lot of things yep. out there. And uh, I think Jody, you mentioned earlier that the the selfie stick this year. How how pathetic is that? Let's. I'm, <laughs> I'm probably jumping into things already, but Soft. how pathetic are we? There's so much high tech gadgetry, and we got you know 3D glasses and all all these cool things. But yet the, the selfie stick. You know, I really need my phone to be two feet away so I can uh, take a photo of myself. How about the Belfie? Did you guys hear about the Belfie stick? <laughs> Have you got yes. one, Steve? Have you got a Belfie. selfie stick? No, it's a, it's called a Belfie. I got to one. take take a, a picture of your bum. A Belfie. You know, yeah, I Belfie. Think Kim Kardashian would need like an extension, you know, an yeah. four ninety five extension for the Belfie stick to get some leverage out there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> And it was the number one selling Christmas gift this year, the selfie stick. Mm. Wow. Amazing. And what about you, Belinda? What, what's your view on the selfie stick? Um, well, I read an article and they said it was the stupidest and most useless thing at the whole of the CES wow. thing. So. <laughs> I think I'd have walked around CES and just gone, oh, another one, really? And no, just no, 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 no. That's, that's so not true. I mean, seriously, how do you do a, a, a respectable selfie without a selfie stick? I think everybody needs one, especially one with a Bluetooth remote. So that it looks like somebody else took the video of you, because otherwise it's so obviously yeah, a selfie you can see or a you. groupie. You can see yeah, your heart sticking out. Well, they is have it for Velcro. Like, um, do you use it on a timer? Is that what you do? So is that the end of the stick, and you, you put it on a timer? Is that how it's working? Or are you if using... you get the cheap one, if you get the cheap one, then there's no remote. But right. the upgrade is to get a Bluetooth remote. That you can hold in your hand, and then you can press the remote and turn it on without. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, obviously, you know, now that the phones have timers built into them, you know, if you prefer to do it that way, you could do it that way as well. But yeah, everybody needs a self self stick, except you know, the the next thing that you're going to need is a drone to take video, so you can do aerial photos of yourself. They've got them on people's watches, and the drone jumps off your watch, takes a photo, and jumps back and follows you. Wow. It's all That's it's all there. It's not it's it's probably 2017 maybe, but it's mm-hmm. it, it's all there. So did, did you get a, a sorry? I was gonna say, ironically, I saw a video of a drone that actually follows you. 
So whatever you're doing, the drone follows you. If you're jogging, if you're biking, if you're skiing, it follows you think, and films you. That's a bulldog or something it's called. Um, something, a, a dog or a mm. drone um, dog or something. Daddy, do, do, you use, have, do you have one? What's your view on all this? I don't have a selfie stick, but there's so many options for selfie sticks. You can bling them out, you know, you can uh, make them shiny and uh, and put like little rhinestones on them. I think, you know, there, there are a couple of things. Um, eyelashes. Eyelashes. You know, there's options for the footy stick maybe coming up. You can put one on your foot. I don't know. I, I, don't, have a, I don't have a selfie stick, <laughs> but I can understand why people do may want, may want one. You know, you, you can fit everyone in if you have a big group and you don't have long arms perhaps that's uh you know a reason but i yeah i i, I don't know i can't find myself pulling one out um in public and feel quite comfortable <laughs> just yet it's, it's really function over form as yeah. jody said she thinks they're fantastic i think they're silly but it's it's function over form you know it, the right. function is you have this awesome photo it's a much better photo you can capture the whole background mm -hmm. um, right. but the form is that you look like an idiot walking around with a selfie stick What's, you know, is the trade-off worth it? And, you know, I couldn't see myself buying one, but now after Jody talks about, talk, talked about it a little bit last week when we were speaking, and I saw one at the airport recently, and I thought, well, you know, I mean, it's, how many times do you ask somebody, hey, can you hold, can you take a picture of us? And, and you know, I don't do that, but the people I'm with, they like to get pictures taken of them, and they always say that kind of stuff, so... I can see it coming in handy for something like that. You know? Well, they have them for Instead the of GoPro. Some stranger walk up, take your picture. They have one for the GoPro camera. I mean, they a lot of skiers oh, and, and skateboarders yeah. and surfers use them a lot. Mm. Yeah, I've just ordered a selfie stick for my GoPro. So basically, so that I can make my own music videos and not have to pay someone hundreds or thousands of dollars to do it for me. That's Especially awesome. since I want complete creative control. So this way, I can just. <laughs> You know, sing and dance and film myself, and uh, and it'll look the way I, I want it to. I love it. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. All right. Let's let's go to the news then, Jody. News time. Here we go. And here we are with the news. Uh, first of all, in the news, Swift jumps up 46 spots on the Red Monk programming language rankings. You know, Swift was introduced not that long ago, maybe about six months ago at WWDC, and it's already leapt 46 spots up the Red Monk programming languages, going from 68 to 22 in just one quarter. It's poised to become a top 20 language on the charts, and it highlights what's so remarkable about Apple and its developer community, their ability to constantly move forward. Um, Swift, as you may know, is the um, new programming language for Apple apps. And as it continues to mature, it starts to play a greater role in iPhone and iPad development. Um, playgrounds make it more accessible to different age ranges and to more people than ever before. No telling how far it can go. Okay, to Belinda. Yes, I've got a story from Business Insider Australia. Apparently a guy managed to cram an Xbox One and PS4 into a single laptop. And he says, why choose between an Xbox One and, One and PS4 when you can choose both? And that's the idea behind the Playbox, a monstrous custom laptop that manages, manages to cram both an Xbox One and PS4 into one device, with, and it has a 22-inch 180p screen. And to swap between the game consoles, there's a switch on the back, and the black box works with both Xbox One and PS4 wireless controllers, and the games are loaded into either side. Sounds interesting. Very cool. Okay, next yeah. story. <laughs> next story is from the one and only Brad's blog. And um, Brad is reporting on Presto TV. And you can turn on te Presto TV offers only $9.99 per month. Presto today announced that its new Presto TV subscription streaming service. And it's going to light up on Sunday, January 18th, bringing an unbelievable selection of thousands of hours of ad free television shows to Australian TV lovers for just. $9.99, that's $9.99 per month. Presto TV joins Presto Movies, which features blockbusters and all-time favorite films from a constantly updated collection of great movies. So for just $9.99 per month, Australians can subscribe to either Presto TV 
or Presto Movies, or you can bundle both services for $14.99 per month and have no ongoing commitment. Uh, pretty cool, huh, Belinda? Yeah, sounds fantastic. And the next story is from Polygon. And the longest Minecraft marathon lasted 24 hours and other Guinness records were broken. Minecraft's wow. longest marathon play session took place in Vienna, Austria and lasted 24 hours and 10 minutes and allowed Martin Vornleitner to claim his place in the Guinness World Records 2015 Gamers Edition. Fort Liners holds one of a dozen Minecraft-related records in the latest edition of the World Record Keeping Organization's gaming-focused book. According to the folks at Guinness, Minecraft also holds the distinction of being the best-selling indie game with the largest indie game convention. Yes, yeah, sounds interesting. I'm not really into Minecraft, but people who are, that would be quite fun. And over to you, Jody. Ooh, we've got a story, kind of like one of those secret missions. Um, Fixu finds more evidence of iOS 9 testing underway. This afternoon, mobile app marketing platform Fixu unveiled new data indicating that iOS 9, the next version of Apple's mobile operating system, is now being tested kind of publicly. According to the company's research, Fixu says it's now seen 145 distinct IDFAs, identifiers for advertisers, in 2015, which hail from iOS 9 devices. I don't know about you, but um, when I updated to iOS 8, I had all kinds of issues. I sure, sure hope that iOS 9 is going to be a lot easier to, to update to. So, okay, Belinda, back to you. And the final story, Google's Classroom app lets students submit homework on their phones. Hmm. Wish that was around when I was growing up. Remember when you forgot to bring your homework to that one time and Mr. Jones from sixth grade wouldn't believe you didn't just slack off. If Google's new classroom app existed back then, you could just have just have asked someone at home to take a picture and submit it through the application. Yep, Google has just released an iOS and an Android classroom classroom app. And it does a couple of more things that other than giving you the option to take pictures of your or your kids' assignments to submit. When installed on a phone, it comes along with the list of apps that you can share with from within another program. You can, for instance, upload drawings or PDFs from within an art app or Google Drive. It also catches its content upon launch so teachers can access a student's work even offline. Other than Very the new cool. mobile app, yeah, it sounds fantastic. Other than the new mobile app, Classroom for Desktop now shows teachers a list of assignments, giving them a clear view of what they've already reviewed and what they've yet to look at. Even the most competent educator can get overwhelmed by years of student-submitted work, though so teachers can now archive past classes in the program if they want. So that sounds fantastic. Excellent. And yeah, excellent. that's the news. That's the news. Great news, uh, Jody and Belinda. Thanks for reading the news. Um, uh, Belinda, let's go to you first. Let's, I want to talk about this new Presto service. What's your view on that? <clears throat> um, it sounds pretty good if it's nine ninety nine a month and you get all that, all the TV stuff, but I'm not sure. Does it have movies? or It has movies. It's, you movies as well, yeah. Movies. You can pay $15 for the movies and, and the TV shows. For one, that's one price for both. Are there any commercials with it? Uh, oh, yeah, it's commercial no, free. Don't, you don't said? think so. No. So that's even better than what we have here in the states. We have Hulu, but Hulu, even if you pay for it, you get to view it on your computer or on uh, the TV on the big screen. But it they throw in ads with it, so it sounds a lot better than Hulu. Mm. Uh, and I, I use Hulu, and um, the ads really do annoy me. I mean, you pay your eight or nine bucks a month, and you still get the ads. And they put an ad in before the show actually starts. Horrible. You know, I, I noticed too. It's it's really interesting. Just how much fast food is in the ads on Hulu? I don't know if that's normal in American TV, but at least every second ad is is fast food. It's about you know getting the latest one dollar thing from somewhere down the road. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, Andrew, what about that American post? Culture for Before you, you go, but... let's chat about that post yesterday, mate, about the free to air one. I want to get your view on that because you didn't really say much. 
Yeah, okay. Um, I, I think the post basically was about somebody who's a little bit jaded because they feel that all of the good sporting codes in Australia are switching to pay TV, um, which is probably something that's happened a lot in the States and sort of things are jumping away from free-to-air and moving towards pay television. Um, I, it is happening to some extent. I know that in Australia, the um, our A-League, so the football or the soccer, is pay, is pay TV, uh, but they do have a deal where on the Friday night they play the the Friday night game, which is usually the biggest game. So I don't have pay TV in Australia, um, and that that's fine. But there's I think a couple other sports which are now moving across to pay TV, and at, at the end of the day, they've made Foxtel particularly because they're the the by far and away the biggest in Australia. They've cut their prices in half recently, so you can now get a Foxtel subscription. For fifty dollars per month, twenty five dollars for the basic fifty channels, plus twenty five dollars for sport, which is about half the price that it actually used to be. And I think if you think about the commercial holders and you know what content costs these days, if there's a sport that you really want to watch and you want to see all of it and you want to see all of the shows during the week, fifty bucks a month, I, I don't think it's too much to pay. I don't I don't pay it. Um, for me, it's probably not a value as, as I'd see it. But if you're into a sport and the only way to see it is there, I, I honestly don't see the problem. That's you know, my opinion. Yeah, that is a good opinion, by the way, too, Andrew. Um, uh, what about you, Jody? What about, what's your view on all this? <clears throat> well, we have Netflix here, um, yep. and it's a paid subscription. It costs about the same as um, this this new um, uh, offer is going to cost. And we don't have commercials, so I guess it's kind of comparable in a way, except they don't really differentiate between TV and movies. It's just kind of um, stuff that's out already versus new releases. And new releases, you have to pay a higher amount, and they send you a CD, which you then have to return, versus um, the live stream stuff, which is basically one price. Then we also have Amazon TV, which is part of Amazon Prime you know, with, with the movie. So we, we have a lot of different options, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. What about you, Steve? Yeah. Um, you, uh, talking about Presto and here I've got uh, actually a newspaper right here and it says uh, TV makers step up to streaming. So they're actually expanding on it. And I believe Dish Networks uh, has a bundle of channels, including live yeah. sports network espn for just twenty dollars a month yeah, I heard about that that's coming to the xbox one that's called um what's that called i can't remember what's called what was that called um i thought it was dish no that was a new name for it that's coming on just for just for the um, xbox well well they they could call it by a different channel but i think uh well it says dish or dish network or uh i'm not sure the the name of the application but uh okay. may, maybe it's another uh channel I remember, as well. yeah i did hear a name but i can't remember the name did you have you heard about it uh jennifer no, I haven't. No, because they no. have twenty channels out coming to, to the Xbox, but I can't even remember what it was called. There's some. I'm not sure what I haven't heard of it. But in regards to what Andrew was saying in, regarding the sports piece, I thought you were asking about that. Um, and you know, here in the states, we have uh, something similar. When you want to watch football, we have the NFL Sunday Ticket uh, through through um, Direct TV, which costs a bundle. But, you know, we, we have similar things now where you have to pay for sports subscriptions. And, right, right. and there are some games that are only on ESPN and you can't get it on regular broadcast television. So I think p things are definitely moving in that direction. I would love it personally if everything were free. But I can see if somebody were watching things for free before and now they have to pay for a subscription as to why they would get upset, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Well, but I your Fox Presto TV no. is awesome, by the way. Yeah, it looks, Go ahead. It looks great. Yeah, yeah, I have Fox yeah. and I watch sports on there and there's no ads on there and stuff and – Oh, that's great. And the HD picture looks better than what you see on the free-to-air. Yeah, free-to-air, they offer it for free, but it's only in standard definition. It's not high. Oh. Yeah, 7 mate, 7 mate's not kidding. bad. But seven yeah, 7 mate offers so HD, yeah. And, uh, not everything is converted over yet. No, no, there's still a lot of SD channels. And when, when, will that, when is everything supposed to convert over for Australia? Oh, uh, I'm sure. Probably a long time. Belinda, you should know. Yeah, everything's <laughs> everything's digital now, except it's still got standard definition and high definition. Well, some movies uh, yeah, are still the older movies are still in you know standard definition, so obviously they're yeah. still going to be small because they're made so long ago. 
Yeah. Yeah, because we've got rid of analog. That's gone yeah. now. That's gone, yeah. Okay, yeah. That is all gone. Okay. That's yeah. gone. Um, Hannah, what about you? What's your view on this, on all this? If you have got an opinion at all? You probably do. Have an opinion? Yes. Hello. Sorry. Hello. Uh, first of all, I don't know if you've got a lot of background noise from me. I have to no, apologise. Cool. I'm uh, I'm at Southland. So oh, cool. if anyone a, wants to come and a, stalk me. What, you're at a shopping centre. What is Southland? Is that a shopping centre? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a shopping centre. Yeah. <laughs> ah, you're buying some Stalking. fun things today. I actually, I bought some Nike sneakers yesterday and I nice. I think I got the wrong size. So oh, I'm nice. going back oh, to yeah, try yeah. a different size. Are they um, Nike Max? What are, what's the Nike runners of it? Oh, they're, um, they're called Lunar Eclipse 5. Oh, wow. And, cool. um, yeah, they're, they're for running, so that's why they called them Lunar Eclipse. And um, they're just great light shoes that have a lot of support. So, do you remember them, Nike um, Max uh, uh, runners, Hannah? Remember them? I do remember them. You used to be able to pump them up, and that yeah. was just the coolest thing ever. Like Reebok, yeah. Reebok pumps, yeah. yeah. Reebok pumps, yeah. Yeah, they were cool. Them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, <laughs> um, that aside, I don't know. I, I, um, I'm feeling uh, the strong. Uh oh. Is, 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 is an interesting one. I'm as. Ah. Uh? Another time. She'll, she'll come back in a it's second. A she'll be back. She'll be back. Yeah. Um, what about um, ZI? Do you, do you use Netflix and that? Uh, uh, so here, you know, in the States as well, you know, between Netflix, HBO Go, uh, you know, Apple TV, Amazon, and then any shows that I want to kind of record on my DVR, um, I'm pretty, you know, it seems pretty set. Um, subscription is definitely seems like the way that it's going and that it's headed, this sort of a la carte programming. You know, you talk to, I, I work with a lot of, you know, YouTubers and kind of like, you know, just finished a, a year long show um, called YouTube Nation. And just, it, it's really evident that, you know, you know, people don't really, there's no affinity for networks anymore. It's just really kind of the show itself. And so yeah. what's what'll be interesting though is in the coming years, if it goes by the way of cable where, you know, in the beginning of cable, you had, you know, shows, networks that you were paying for and there were no commercials. And then sort of people just started getting used to having commercials and then paying for their <laughs> cable subscription. And so it'll be interesting sort of the progression of this sort of a la carte programming in five, 10 years, you know, 15 years, if it'll be the same thing where we get used to kind of paying for just programming and then it'll start ballooning out and then advertising will have to kind of be incorporated in some way so some interesting times yeah yeah do you have a, a tivo at all do you use it uh, yeah i do i love my tivo actually i i did not have tivo for many many years and i think we we just got one last year i think and i i can't live without it i forgot what other dvr we had before then which is i think it was just time warner cable yeah um but uh yeah i that's really kind of how we watch most of our programming here it's just like we record everything and then when we have time um because we're really busy always working we'll just watch an hour or so of tv yeah. and then um be done with it yeah that, it, yeah that, yeah that's what i do i record my all my shows and then watch them and then skip the ads and then delete it and that's it yeah Pretty exactly cool. um and Belinda, i think you do the same thing don't you, you record yeah because i work the night shift so usually all my shows are on when i'm at work so i just tape it and then watch it when i get home okay yeah. all right Belinda, you want to uh, announce the uh, guest that we have on today uh yes our guest today is zadi diaz Zardi, hi diaz, welcome <laughs> Thank from you. Zadi.tv. Tell us about your website. Uh, so, you know, my website is really just focused on, you know, what I do for work, basically. And so I'm really involved in online media, um, been doing it for about, you know, over 10 years, just, uh, kind of figuring out how entertainment and, and technology sort of mix. And, you know, I started a show um, uh, about in 2006 with my husband um, called Epic Foo. And at that time, it was a show about internet culture and kind of following people who were doing really cool stuff online, a lot of, you know, technologists, but also creatives and artists and just people that, that were just experimenting with stuff. And so we did that show. It was like a, 
three days a week or so. Then it got into like once a week and and made it a little longer. And um, that show lasted for about five years or so, five or six years. Um, and then after that, uh, I started working for Disney Interactive and focusing on making shows for them online for YouTube and figuring out having them, you know, try to figure out how to make. Uh, programming for the web. Um, so I was focused on that. And then this past year, I worked on YouTube Nation, which was a show about YouTube uh, creators. And, um, you know, you go to YouTube and you really don't know what to find. It's sort of just a lot of stuff coming at you. So it was really designed as an experiment for a year to sort of create this sort of index um, so that when you go, you know, you know, who's creating what, what are some milestones, what are some shows that you should be watching, you know, what are some interesting videos that you may have missed um, and so we just wrap that up this year and kind of going into the next uh, thing so yeah so the website is really about a lot of you know just um, the videos that I've created the shows that I've produced and um, kind of aggregating all of that in one site have you worked with uh, I Justine before I love I Justine. I've known her for many, many years. I I remember meeting Justine here in LA when he she had just moved here at Canner's Canner's um, uh, restaurant. We had a little video blogging meetup, oh. and about. 15 of us met and we had dinner there just kind of getting to know each other and she had just gotten here and started her video blog I was really into technology and trying to figure out how to do all of this stuff and we literally broke bread we literally had a big loaf of bread which we broke <laughs> and uh, started talking about all this stuff so I've known her for uh, quite a, and I've loved I've loved seeing her sort of trajectory and actually just recently worked with her on YouTube Nation for with uh, on a couple of um, episodes as well she's she's been doing great stuff yeah she has yeah she's very funny and a lot of yeah. videos and she's yeah 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 she's great yeah and uh, you have some great youtubers on in in australia too natalie tran um from community channel yep, yep. um we love her as well yeah yeah she's very cool yeah yeah um yeah. steve any questions um yeah it's uh with the youtube nation uh have you noticed like on youtube um because i know recently uh you mentioned about uh more to online and streaming uh, some of the the YouTube channels are so big they actually get more viewers than than a lot of cable networks. So um, how does that play into what you did at um, YouTube Nation as far as that's very popularity? Yeah, that's yeah, that's very true. That was one uh, you know of the many objectives that we had. So really, how do we bubble up? a lot of the creators that aren't getting as many views because a lot of these creators that we're getting, you know, that are very popular now, they've been at it for many years. You know, some of them have had their channels for five, you know, four or five, six years, and they've really kind of built their audiences from scratch. Right. And so you have this sort of, you know, um, balloon effect. Right. Um, and they've learned how to work the system and collaborate with each other. And so for a lot of newcomers, it's really intimidating. You kind of don't know where to start. And there's just so much more content. There's so much more video on on YouTube than there was, you know, four years ago, where a lot of these popular YouTubers, if you were collaborating with others, it was very easy to find you. And also there was a lot more, um, you know, hand-picked curation going on in the platform. They actually had editors and people picking shows and showing you stuff. So, you know, if you had a really great video, it was more than, you know, po probable that you would be featured on the on the homepage of YouTube. Now it's a lot more algorithmic based, right? So, you know, your video has to kind of hit a lot of these different sort of numbers in order to actually even bubble up in order to sort of create that snowball effect. So our show was really designed to balance that out not only feature really big YouTubers and what they were doing, any milestones that they would hit if they were having, you know, their two millionth subscriber, you know, we would kind of, you know, highlight them on the show, but also bring up the, you know, newcomers and, and show some of the channels that maybe only had four views, but were creating really awesome stuff and you should really know about them because um, they were putting as much work into their stuff as sort of the big YouTubers and then trying to get them to collaborate as well. Um, so that was really kind of the mission, balancing a lot of that stuff out. Well, I noticed that on my YouTube channel as well. Um, I've had like, I think, three different um, YouTube partners want me to add them to their, their partnership. And I don't necessarily get a lot of views. I, I got maybe uh, 385, you know, followers. But yet my videos generate quite a bit of views I mean, not millions or anything like that, but consistent enough where, 
you know, it's it's enough where to join, I guess, a YouTube partnership and grow the channel and give you uh, the smaller channels a way to grow uh, that they maybe not normally be able to do themselves. Right. So, yeah, so there are these, you know, what they call MCNs, these multi-channel networks. And it's kind of like your maker, which was recently bought by YouTube and you have your full screen and you have all these other MCNs that kind of focus on, you know, um, bringing in YouTubers that are maybe either focused on a particular niche, you know, or they have a, a stable audience, really maybe really good view numbers, but not a lot of subscribers. Um, but they really kind of like figure out how to aggregate a lot of those creators and sort of find funnel them into verticals and figure out how they can collaborate with each other so that they can help, you know, each other grow, uh, maybe be more attractive to advertisers if you're kind of advertising across the board for, you know, gaming perhaps, and you have, you know, 50 channels that are doing really cool gaming stuff where each one by itself may not be as strong, but, but together may be really, you know, um, attractive to an advertiser. So a lot of these M MCNs kind of function as a, you know, support network um, also for young, you know, uh, younger channels. Um, um, but also kind of, you know, a way to figure out how to monetize their, you know, content and figure out how to make it a business, which a lot of YouTubers are also interested in, right? It's like, okay, you do it for fun and then you find out that you want to do this for a living. And then so how do you actually go about that? And what are some of the steps that you can take um, now that it's so saturated? Um, and how do you, are you attractive to advertisers and, and the like? So, so, so sometimes MCNs can help with that, depending on what kind of niche you're kind of fulfilling. Um, what about Brittany, that Brittany girl, Brittany Fallon, her name is she got Oh, Brittany Furlong? Yeah, Phil, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's funny. <laughs> she's great. She's so, she's, I, I have, um, we did something with her, um, really briefly, but, you know, it's, she's interesting, right? Because she yeah, comes she from Vine, the Vine platform, which yeah. is not YouTube. So the Vine is like this platform that, you know, it's also a video platform, but it's six seconds long. And so you have to tell your story in six seconds. And, you know, it's really interesting how a lot of these creators on Vine have found a way to really kind of use that platform and really kind of be creative with it. And a mass, an amazing audience, like really, really powerful audience. And so that those creators have then traveled over to YouTube and then created their channels there and brought along their audiences there. So now they have two platforms there where they're pretty popular. And Brittany's a great example of doing that, where she mm. was really popular on Vine, kind of took her audience, created kind of, you know, did a lot of stuff on, on YouTube and then tried to figure out how to balance those two things where now she's kind of like doing her own things and looking at deals and, and really has her sort of choice, you know, pick of the litter, so to speak. Um, but it's interesting because Vine and YouTube don't, you know, they they don't really play well, right? Like there's two video platforms they have to figure out how to, how does that even, you know, work and, and on Vine for her, how does, you know, how does she, how does she potentially monetize or how does she make a living if that's the thing that she wants to do or is she using it for more for promotion in order to sort of, you know, um, extend out and create her brand, which a lot of people also use it for. And there's also a Twitter video coming soon too. Did you hear about that as well? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because Vine, you know, and Twitter, you know, it's kind of the same um, um, company, but uh, they're, that's, um, what's interesting about that is having video be more prominent on Twitter makes complete sense because a lot of people use Twitter for sort of their news aggregator or feed. And so um, having that be sort of a streaming kind of constant um, media platform in that sense will be interesting to see, you know, in yeah. addition to just text, now you're getting information in a visual sense, just coming at you in a consistent way. So that'll, that'll be interesting to see if it's a complete, you know, if it's changing from what they're doing in, with Vine or like what that, you know, what that sort of extends out to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jody, any questions? Oh my gosh. I have so many questions. Um, <laughs> Zadi, how did you get started? What was your what was your motivation and, and inspiration? Oh well, it's weird. I've had a very um, windy path to what I do now. Um, you know, I moved to California maybe nine years ago, and before I was doing any of this, um, I was just trying to figure out what to. You know, I've always been a creative person. I, I worked in in a theater, New York theater. Um, I was kind of a theater rat for a long time, so I worked in marketing. Um, for theater for a few years. I worked in publishing um, for many years as an art director. And then one day, I, you know, I got very involved in politics. My father's, you know, 
poli sci major in college, and he always all had me involved in a lot of like protests and kind of getting involved in what was going on. So in 2004, there were a lot of um, kind of activity happening in New York with a lot of artists sort of um, getting involved in the um, election in 2004. And so I wanted to document a lot of that stuff. So I took my camera, went now, uh, documented a lot of poets who were having poetry readings that were really kind of politically charged. And then as I was doing this, I thought, you know, this is really fun. I got in, got into making a lot of short form documentaries and got into putting videos, those videos online or finding a way to put, and this is pre YouTube, right? So there's no YouTube. This is like 2004. I had to figure out how to compress video at the time. The video was maybe 180, you know, by 240. It was, it's just a tiny, you know, uh, stamp of a video, you, mm-hmm. you know, it was horrible. Um, you couldn't upload it really and watch it. It had to kind of buffer. It was a, just a bad experience overall, but it taught you kind of how to tell a story within these confines. You know, what is it? What does the image have to look like in order to grab your attention? How short does it have to be in order to sort of like not buffer so much? So it, it really kind of uh, what was interesting about that time was you had a lot of filmmakers really communicating with a lot of programmers and technologists and this sort of energy that kind of happened was like it really did feel like a media revolution it felt like you can take you know it it, sort of the the media back into the power of the people and kind of like you know extend that out into the web and what that meant so I got involved in that and then we moved from New York to LA and then it got a little bit more personal I figured I could use this to stay in touch with my family in New York they can see what I'm doing I started video blogging when I got to LA. Um, There was this show called Rocket Boom. It was one of the first daily news shows. So I became a correspondent for Rocket Boom and I continued video blogging. And I just kind of built a community here in LA. I went to the Apple store, started teaching people how to video blog. Um, What was really great about that, we had a lot of people from like NBC and CBS and all these networks coming in and reporters trying to figure out, how do I do this? I really want to tell my story. This is amazing. And so from there, it's just kind of grew. The community started growing. Um, It was very sort of media focused and then it grew into sort of entertainment. And then all of a sudden we found ourselves in the middle of, wow, Hollywood is really changing. They're knowing there's, they know that there's something on the horizon, right? And we thought it was just a really great place to be in, especially here where this sort of convergence of all of this technology, Silicon Valley, all of this stuff happening and then sort of Hollywood and entertainment and then trying to figure out, well, what's the next phase for this industry. Um, so that's kind of like the overall like 30,000 foot view of, of the, this path <laughs> that I've taken. <laughs> well, and if, if you'll humor me, I'd like to ask just one quick follow up, which probably isn't that quick. But if you had advice for somebody who is just starting um, or who was interested in this whole video concept um, in terms of technology and also in terms of content, what kind of advice would you give? Well, I guess what I would say is what, what, I don't know if it's the best advice, but what I did was, you know, when I started this, um, I watched a lot of video online. I watched a lot. I was a lurker for quite a a while um, to the point where my husband was like, you you need to stop watching so much video online. I'm like, no, this is for a reason. It's all, there's a point I ended up dragging him into this world and it's been really kind of fruitful, but watch a lot of what's happening, what works, what doesn't. um, And then just dive in. I know it's really scary at first to kind of like learn on the fly and in public, especially if you're not used to it, because with that comes sort of, you know, you're putting yourself out there and you have public commenting and you have to get used to not only starting a craft and figuring out how it actually works, how to shoot, how, you know, how to make sure your audio is fine and all of that, but then also psychologically what it means to put a, yourself out there, if it is yourself, if you're not just creating a story, how to put yourself out there and be okay with being open, how to, what it truly means to be authentic, all of that. So it, it is sort of a large step and you don't have to jump into it completely blind. Um, you know, I think everybody always says, just jump into it, you know, just do it. And I think you, truthfully, you have to do what's comfortable for you. Um, if you feel like, you know what, I, I only want to do audio for now, like this is a great example of having podcasts and maybe the next step is, okay, well, you know what, I just want to do one video. Maybe it'll be 60 seconds and I'll just record it. It'll be an experiment and I'm not going to put any sort of pressure 
um, on on any kind of parameters around it, just do that. Um, and then just start really slow. Start building a community, um, figure out who else is out there that you can collaborate with that may be doing the same thing as you or maybe is complementary to what you're doing. Um, so if you're, you know, doing a gaming podcast or or a show, you know, is there another, you know, um, are there uh gamers out there that you can kind of connect with or somebody that's doing that does gaming reviews or somebody who just wants to do like you know um uh just wants to collaborate just to have fun like who else is out there right and then start kind of like once you know that what what um the next step would just be you know figuring out who could you could partner with, you know, if you want to kind of grow into this career. So there are many stages, but I think the first one is just to kind of like start really slow, figure out what you're comfortable with, put something out there, not too much pressure, and then just start learning and, and building a community. I think the community part is the most important, especially because um, from that you can really kind of learn um, and have people tell you um, what works and what doesn't. Excellent. Excellent. Brad? Okay, let's go to Jennifer. Any questions? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, was well, I, fine. I, saw, I saw that you have over 2 million subscribers now. When did you hit the 2 million point? Oh, so this was for YouTube Nation. This happened um, in maybe, I want to say October-ish or so. Um, and YouTube Nation is really, um, you know, distinctive in that, it was the official show of YouTube. Um, so it was a partnership between DreamWorks Animation and YouTube um, and is one, one of the first official shows. So it was part of YouTube's initiative to not only, you know, it would help promote the show, help other creators kind of um, uh, be informed of what was happening and have them come on. So um, the two million, million mark was really exciting. Um, it was also through the kind of like when I'm talking about collaboration and helping um, other creators come on board and, and if they're happy with what they're seeing, they also help promote it as well. Um, and also, you know, having some videos that really kind of tie into the social zeitgeist and, you know, online events and, and, um, and figuring out ways to kind of like make sure that it's hitting certain, you know, the sort of, sort of pulse of, of what's happening online. And that's kind of how we grew into, awesome. into having our 2 million mark. Yeah. And you also said you work with your husband. So is, was he um, a vlogger before? Was he into creating uh, media online? Or is that how you guys met? And, and, you know, how, I mean, I just think how awesome to be able to share this, a similar passion with your spouse. And I think that's amazing. So yeah, kind of it's, uh, about that. <laughs> it's it's, it's um, definitely unique. We've known each other since we were, you know, in college, really, you know, young. This is actually our, you know, we've been together for 20 years <laughs> I can tell you how, how how long we've been together um so he went to school for fine arts and painting in in Pratt in New York and um this was definitely not something in his purview but he did um he was into writing and screenplays and um had a couple of um a close sort of projects that he had almost worked on here in LA and so at the time, he wasn't interested in sort of online or didn't, you know, it was still very new. In 2004, I think, is when he started kind of getting interested. And in 2006, when we started uh, Epic Foo, um, we both worked on that project together. Um, and that was five years working together. Um, and then when I let we when that project finished, I went to Disney Interactive and he went to Blip, um, which is also an online platform. And we worked separately for about two years or so. And then we came back together for YouTube Nation for this year. And then now we're kind of, you know, going separate ways again. So we kind of do this dance of coming together, going apart, you know, and figuring out how um, how we kind of build that ladder, so to speak. But it's interesting. It's not for everyone. Um, it, it, it's good that we both definitely, you know, share the same passions, um, which is kind of storytelling in general. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very cool. All right. Good question, Jennifer. Uh, Belinda, any questions before we wrap up? Because we need to go to Hannah real quick to talk to her about a new album. Yeah, I was just interested in what other projects you're involved in at the moment. Um, yeah, so I'm about to go into um, a really interesting project in the next couple of weeks um, that I hopefully um, can announce soon. But it, it's it's still online media. It's still creating stories. Um, it'll be nonfiction and fiction um, 
uh, storytelling. Um, it'll, you know, hopefully have the support of um, um, people that really, you know, know their stuff online. And just, you know, I think that'll be the, the path going forward uh, regardless. It'll be, you know, collaborating, collaborating with really interesting people and um, continuing to create really interesting stories for um, all platforms, you know, including the web. Yeah, that's all I had. That's all the questions I had. <laughs> good stuff. I was just waiting for Belinda to finish if she had any more questions. Okay, good Sorry. question, Belinda. Um, so, yeah, that's great to have you on. Uh, Thank you. Great to have you on. And, um, yeah, are you an Apple geek? Do you like the, what sort of Apple products do you use? Uh, yes, I have the iPhone 6 Plus. Nice. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's fun. It's great because I watch a lot of video. Um, so it is great to have a big screen. I thought I would be dropping it a lot more than I am. I have not yet. So I, that's good. <laughs> I have uh, um, Apple laptop. You know, I'm pretty much I've been an Apple person since the beginning. So everything yeah. I use is Apple. Yeah. And I also got an Xbox One. Oh, nice. For Christmas, so we are are using that as what, well. What games do you play on there? Um, you know, because work is so stressful, uh, I'm really into games that don't require me screaming because I'm very competitive and I'm a sore loser. Um, so <laughs> I thought uh, I had Minecraft and that's what we were playing for a while. <laughs> um, but Assassin's Creed also. But then I get really, um, you know, I, 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 I tend to carry, you know, um, anger if, mm -hmm. if I'm losing in a game. Yeah, so I, I tend to do, yeah, I tend to do very stressless <laughs> games. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, we need to add you on Xbox then. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay, do you want to hang around for a minute? Sure, that'd be great. All right. Anna Silva, welcome. Hi. I'm really sorry about before I got a phone call, but I'm back and hopefully I don't get another phone call because that would be very inconvenient. Okay, cool. What have you been up to last time we spoke? Um, so, yeah, so I've been spending the last month uh, working on the second album with uh, – I feel, it feels strange saying band because we're really a duo in The Prince of Seagulls. It's myself and Paul Harmon. And um, Paul, who goes under the name Harmon um, for making music, is um, he's, been, he's been very prolific. He's been doing stuff with um, – uh, he's in another band called Promised Land and they got, they've had stuff released on the label Hole in the Sky, which is a fairly – to my understanding, I could be wrong, but I hope I'm not. Fairly pre prestigious um, independent label. So, um, yeah, so working on the second album. And so I've been spending day after day in our studio uh, agonising over every note and every sound that I'm using. And then last night I was watching Rage, which for those who don't know is an Australian music television program where they show music videos and um yeah and hearing <laughs> hearing some crappy stuff so you're raging just going i don't know that they agonized as much as i do but that's that's in my nature i agonize and i want to yeah i don't mind, I don't mind right it's pretty cool it's still a good show i do like rage they um i was I watched again this morning and they were showing um they were showing old music videos they were i caught <laughs> i caught the first minute of this um it looked like it was from the 60s. It was in black and white, and it was a Japanese uh, band, rock and roll band, doing Johnny B. Good. So, yeah, Rage is pretty awesome. They, they yeah. show lots of diverse music. Um, but, yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been stuck in the studio, and, um, yeah. Cool. Next week I'm going to Rainbow Serpent for the first time, which, again, for those who don't know, is uh, – I guess I don't really know what it is. I'm going to be finding out, but it's basically a massive dance festival. And um, a friend of mine who goes every year, he's a professional producer and he says he loves going just because the sound system is awesome. So I'm going to go and sit next to him and say, okay, so tell me what you're hearing so I can pick his brains about – frequencies and tone and so yeah i think it'll be good fun good stuff uh Belinda, any questions uh not really no okay jody any questions <laughs> jody? sorry i was on mute because the dogs are <laughs> the dogs are acting up um uh. no well hannah so 
just I just want to first of all congratulate you because um, I think you've just had so much success, and I think um, you know you're you're charging ahead and and doing your music and your thing, and I'm just really proud of you. And um, I have your jeez, oh, thanks. <laughs> So I have your, your album, and, and, and I'm having a blast following your adventures. So thanks for, for being there and, and uh, for being so brave and doing all that you do. Thank you so much. I have to thank um, Brad and all of you guys at Tech Webcast because it's always a pleasure coming on the show. And um, uh, I'm always touched every time you invite me to come back. So thank you so much for having me on the show so well. No problem, man. I'm happy. Yeah, good to have you on any time you want. And of course, she has to be a little bit touched to come on the show anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Steve, any questions? Uh, I just want to say uh, um, good, luck, good luck on your uh, next album. And I, I miss your claw, claw hands. That's all I guess. <laughs> yeah. Your crab claw hands. Yeah, I recently, crab, um, crab, yeah, crab. yeah, I actually um, <laughs> I was recognized in a crowd the other week. I went to... Meredith Music Festival because my friend Phil had the um, he was DJing the 1 to 3 a.m. time slot and so I was dancing on stage and there was actually a couple of people in the front row. Meredith Music Festival is a um, is a wonderful festival where one of the rules of um, attendance is no dickheads and uh, they have about 10,000 people in attendance and so yeah dancing on stage was awesome. And I thought to myself, I should have brought the crab claws, but I didn't. And then there was a couple of people in the front row who caught my eye and made crab claw gesture at me. And I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> those 6,000 views on YouTube count for something. I was recognized. <laughs> yeah. So that was cool. All right. Anyone else got any questions before we wrap up? Uh, I know. I had something now. Yep. Linda, yep. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say you might end up on Rage one day. <laughs> well, Rage. actually, I, I would like to. I did submit my Crab Dancers video and it wasn't selected, which I was a bit annoyed mm. about. But, you know, I'll just have to keep making more videos and hopefully... Yeah, you should go on better. Channel 31, when, uh, Hannah. I should go on Channel 31. You should yeah. go on that 1700 show, that music show. All right, I'll check it out. Yeah, have a look, have a look, because um, a lot of people go on there and interview about their music and stuff. Yeah, cool. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, it is a good plan. Uh, Jennifer, any more questions or anyone else got any more questions? I do not have any more questions, but always nice to talk with you, Hannah. And yeah, I look forward to you being on the show again very soon. Aww, thanks. Well, I thanks hope for being on. Hannah, you're um... I can't <laughs> wait to hear your new album. Same Thank here. You. Thanks, guys. When, when will it be out again? When, when, what's the uh, ETA on that? It's, it's hard to say, but um, Paul is such a strong driving force. Basically, I won't be surprised if, it, if we're already getting it out in June, and we'll we'll do another crowdfunding campaign, um, which uh, probably unpossible again because Ooh. the one that we ran last year was very successful, and um, and I learned a lot more from it. That was my second crowdfunding campaign, so this one will be my third. And crowdfunding just seems to be the best platform for independent music artists today. So yeah, so probably the middle of the year sometime. Cool. Is it the same sort of music? Any different sort of music? Or was it... um, similar idea, but this time, actually I'm singing on the album this time, so that's oh, different. Cool. Um, but similar thing where it's kind of like a soundtrack and every song um, fades into the next and or, or mixes into the next. And actually, interesting idea, Paul's idea. Um, it's going to be like a circle. So the you could base the idea being that you could leave the cd on repeat or your mp3s on repeat if that's how you roll and the first the beginning of the album rolls into the end rolls into the beginning rolls into the end so yeah so it's an interesting concept and i look forward to finishing it <laughs> cool um thank you for being on hannah where can they get hold of you if they want to ask you any more questions um i am everywhere and i am nowhere uh, just hannah silver right <laughs> Hannah Silver, there's no H on the end of Hannah. I'm on YouTube. My username is Astrobic, like Astro Boy, Astro Bic, B I C. And yeah, I'm on Google Plus and Twitter and Facebook and all the rest of it. Good stuff. All right. Jody Rains, what about you? Where can they get hold of you if they want to get ask you any questions? 
<laughs> you can find me on uh, many of the typical channels, but uh, on Twitter, my main handle is Sunswept. Um, otherwise, you can find me as Jody Rains or Webmarcom at webmarcom.net. Good stuff. You can get me on Twitter, Brad Osmond Tech Webcast. Uh, Belinda, what about you? What's your final view? Yeah, um, you can get me on Twitter at BDemi, and it's been a terrific show. Good stuff. And uh, Zedai, what about you? What about we're going to hold of you? Yeah, you can um, reach me on Twitter on uh, at Zadi Z A Z A D I, and uh, this has been a fun conversation. Just want to thank you guys. It's no been problem. Pretty funny. Come pretty back for any time. Funny. If you want to come. Okay. <laughs> funny, funny. Um, <laughs> but anything, yeah, good to have you on. Been fun to have you on. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, what about you? I thought it was a fantastic show, and people can find me at uh, jenniferruggiero.com. All right, good stuff, Steve. And you can find me at uh, on Twitter as Chatterbox underscore live. Okay, who's on next week, Steve? And uh, let me check on that. And we have there should be someone on next mm, week because I know there hmm. is. You know what? For some reason, I'm not showing anybody. Really? Did you, did you not get my calendar? Um, in usually, when I open up my calendar or my. Ah. Tocos. Oh, I know who it is. The taco. Taco, yeah, taco. I'm Tocos. excited about that, yes. yeah. Matthew's from taco. Matt's from taco, yeah. It's going be good. <laughs> so everyone get taco on their phone and use it. It's going to be good. Um, that's it. Thanks for everyone for being on. Appreciate it. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Hannah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Tech webcast. The hosts and guests are unsurpassed. Tech webcast Cause technology moves so fast Tech webcast ha, Stick around and you're gonna have a blast Yeah Tech, 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 tech webcast ha, ha. Tech, 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 tech webcast Big ups to Andrew, to Brad, Jody, Steve and Jennifer